Welcome to our episode of the China Briefing, where we dive into the latest happenings with a sprinkle of zest and a dash of insight. Today, we're zooming into a pressing issue that's been making headlines, the mental health crisis among China's youth. With over 9 million adolescents grappling with depression and anxiety, the ripple effects on the country's economic growth and societal vitality are becoming hard to ignore. It's a complex cocktail of academic pressure, bleak job prospects, and societal expectations, leaving many feeling like they're in a pressure cooker with no release valve. And with fertility rates dipping, the future's looking a bit uncertain. But hey, it's not all doom and gloom, there are talks of policy shifts aimed at easing the burden and sparking a bit of hope. Hopping over to Taiwan, it seems they're also facing a demographic dilemma, but with a unique twist. Despite being a beacon of progress in some areas, conservative traditions are putting a damper on fertility solutions for same-sex couples and single women. Artificial reproduction tools remain out of reach for many, pushing them to seek options abroad. It's a thorny issue, but there's a glimmer of change on the horizon, with voices in parliament advocating for more inclusive policies. Could this be the nudge Taiwan needs to boost its birth rate? Only time will tell. And in other news, the US is playing a delicate balancing act with Venezuela, pondering over oil business dealings amidst sanctions, and aiming not to stir the pot too much with gas prices or migration concerns. Meanwhile, safety concerns for Chinese nationals in Pakistan and the tragic loss of Chinese migrants in Mexico highlight the risks and challenges faced by individuals across the globe. But on a brighter note, Arizona State University's swimming team, under the guidance of Bob Bowman, Michael Phelps' former coach, clinched a title Phelps never did, showcasing the power of teamwork and perseverance. And in the Netherlands, a tense hostage situation in a cafe ended with the suspect in custody and hostages freed, thankfully without any explosive threats materialising. So, as we navigate through these stories of challenges, policy debates, and triumphs, it's clear that the world is a tapestry of complex issues and inspiring achievements. Please stay tuned for more detailed content on these fascinating topics. How will China turn economic? Social fortunes around if youth let it rot. South China Morning Post. The mental health of young people in China is becoming a serious issue, with millions suffering from burnout and depression due to academic pressure and a lack of job prospects. Researchers estimate that over 9 million Chinese adolescents aged between 10 and 19 have depression or anxiety. The prevalence of mental health issues among young people may affect the country's future human capital and economic growth. The lack of opportunity and low confidence in future expectations, primarily due to the economy and lack of occupational and social mobility, are contributing factors to the mental health crisis. The depression and lack of motivation among young people in China could have long-term effects on fertility, societal vitality, and innovation, potentially leaving the country worse off than Japan's long economic stagnation. Parents are pressuring their children to excel academically, making them feel helpless and overwhelmed. Many graduates are struggling to find jobs, leading to increased competition for government positions. The jobless rate for the 16-24 to 24 age group hit a record high of 21.3% in June 2022. The low job prospects and high cost of childrearing are contributing to China's declining fertility rate. The country's fertility rate is expected to remain below the replacement level, leading to population decline and an aging population. China has introduced policies to encourage childbearing, such as the three children policy and incentives like cash handouts and tax breaks, but they have not made much difference. Experts suggest more forceful policies, including reducing the number of school years and scrapping compulsory exams, to make couples less reluctant to have children and ease the negative effects of an aging population on economic growth and innovation. Taiwan needs more babies. But conservative traditions are holding back some fertility solutions. CNN. Taiwan is facing a shrinking population but is yet to provide access to artificial reproduction tools for same-sex couples and single women. Same-sex couples and single women in Taiwan are banned from accessing procedures such as in vitro fertilization, IVF, or egg freezing, while surrogacy is entirely illegal. 
This is leading to couples spending large sums of money to travel overseas to access reproductive technologies. Taiwan has one of the lowest birth rates in the world, and the number of newborn babies is declining every year. It is estimated that Taiwan's total fertility rate, the number of births from a woman in her lifetime, in 2022 was just 0.87. A birth rate of 2.1 is needed to maintain a stable population without immigration. Chen Qinghui, a fertility specialist and the first to win a seat in Taiwan's parliament, is pushing for a loosening of restrictions. Chen's proposals include prioritizing IVF access for single women, lesbian couples, and unmarried heterosexual couples. Chen believes that if the rules are relaxed, Taiwan could see a rise in the birth rate of 20% to 30%. U.S. considers allowing limited oil business to continue in Venezuela. Washington Post. The Biden administration is considering ways to impose new limits on oil sales by the government of President Nicolas Maduro without increasing the number of Venezuelan migrants, raising U.S. gas prices or angering other Latin American governments. Facing a mid-April deadline to decide whether to extend a temporary suspension of sanctions it granted Venezuela last fall, the administration is said to be considering a Treasury Department proposal to impose a new sanctions regime allowing Venezuela to continue to sell crude to international customers but not in US dollars. Instead, Venezuela would be paid in its own currency, the Bolivar, deposited into its central bank through debt relief payments or barter arrangements. The U.S. Treasury General license issued last year allows buyers from around the world to purchase Venezuelan crude and pay for it in U.S. dollars for the first time since Trump's maximum pressure policy effectively removed it from the international market. China-Pakistan projects won't be safe if local feelings are ignored. South China Morning Post Chinese engineers working on a hydropower project in Pakistan have been targeted in a suicide bombing attack. The attack killed five Chinese engineers and their driver and has raised concerns about the safety of Chinese citizens in Pakistan. The attack comes at a time of increased attacks against Chinese nationals in the country, with jihadist groups and Baloch separatist groups both targeting Chinese interests. The attack may also impact China's plans for further investment and development in Pakistan, particularly in the context of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, CPEC. Bodies of eight Chinese migrants found on Mexico beach after boat capsized. South China Morning Post The bodies of eight Chinese migrants were found on a beach in southern Mexico after the boat they were traveling in capsized. The boat, operated by a Mexican, left to Pashala in Cayapas state on Thursday. The bodies were discovered on Friday in the state of Oaxaca, along a route frequently used by people trying to reach the United States. Another migrant survived the ordeal. The rising numbers of migrants have overwhelmed Mexican immigration facilities and shelters, and the government has come under increased pressure from the United States to fight illegal immigration. Bob Bowman, led by his Michael Phelps heir, wins the swimming title that Phelps never did. Yahoo! Arizona State University, ASU, won its first national title in swimming on Saturday. The team's coach, Bob Bowman, who had previously coached Michael Phelps, expressed his delight at having guided ASU to victory. Bowman, who had won Olympic medals as a coach, said the win was extra special because it was a team achievement. Bowman joined ASU in 2015 and began recruiting top swimmers, however, it was a challenge to persuade them to join a team that did not already have top swimmers, he said. Bowman managed to recruit Grant House, a freestyler from Ohio, who was the first to take the leap of faith. House lent legitimacy to Bowman's pitch and other elite recruits started to follow. The biggest recruit was Leon Marchand, a Frenchman who had initially wanted to join a perennial NCAA power team, but opted for ASU because of Bowman. In March 2023, Marchand became a double world champion. He also bought into the team concept and helped build a team culture. Last year, ASU finished second in the NCAA meet, but this year won the title with Marchand winning his maximum allocation of individual titles. Hostage drama in Dutch cafe ends with armed suspect arrested, for freed. South China Morning Post 
The hostages were freed and a suspect was taken into custody after a hostage situation in the central Dutch town of Eid. The incident took place at a night spot popular with young people, and involved a confused man armed with knives. Reports initially suggested that the man had threatened to use explosives, but authorities later confirmed that there were no explosives in his backpack. The motive for the incident is under investigation, and there is currently no reason to suspect a terrorist motive. The suspect is known to the police and has a previous conviction for threatening behavior. Rare UN consensus on AI a good start but more cooperation is key. SCMP opinion. The United Nations General Assembly has unanimously backed a US-led resolution on artificial intelligence, AI. The agreement, which was co-sponsored by more than 120 countries including China, is the first of its kind and aims to enhance the benefits of AI while limiting risks. The resolution stresses the need to protect human rights and adhere to international law as AI technology develops. It also highlights the importance of narrowing the global digital divide and ensuring fair access to AI for developing countries. While the resolution is not legally binding, it is seen as a positive step towards greater global cooperation on AI. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.